What's up guys, I'm Nick of Camera Crunch, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Yongnuo YN62 wireless flash triggers. Now what's special about these flash triggers is unlike your standard flash trigger that only sends out information that tells your flash to fire, what this flash trigger does is when used in conjunction with a, a flash that it's supposed to work with, it can transfer ETTL flash information, which basically is like you know, auto flash mode with exposure compensation, and it can also do high speed sync. So as you guys might know, if you have a standard flash trigger, you'll usually have a sync speed of around 160th, 1 200th, 1 250th sometimes, and sometimes even 1 320th. But sometimes that's still a little bit low when you're doing flash outdoors. Sometimes, you know, the sun is too powerful and you can't really shoot with that low of a shutter speed. So what this will do is let you use shutter speeds way above that. And I'm going to show you guys some images where I use shutter speeds of one one thousandth of a second and above to create images that you couldn't have normally done if you're just using a normal flash trigger. So that's one of the benefits to using something like this. So starting off with the build quality, these flash triggers are built very, very well. They're built with a high quality plastic and I have dropped these a few times. They only have you know a few marks to show for it, but nothing major and they still work perfectly fine. One thing to note though is that it does feel a little bit hollow inside. So although the plastics are nice and hard, it does feel like there's a little bit of space inside and I wish they had made the unit a little bit smaller, made it feel a little bit more dense, but seeing as this uses two AA batteries, I can sort of see where the size factor comes in. Moving around the flash trigger, you have your on and off switch over here, which is pretty self-explanatory. You have your set button for your groups. You have your set button for your channels. So you can do a whole combination of groups and channels depending on how many flashes you're using. And maybe if other people are using flashes within the vicinity, you can change your channel so that you don't interfere with someone else's flash. You also have your test button so that you can uh, fire the flashes and see what's working, what's not working to see if you need to change anything. You have your PC sync cord. You have a attachment for a lanyard. So if you're going to hang this off somewhere instead of sticking it through the hot shoes. And then you have, of course, the hot shoe that you can attach to your camera's hot shoes. So now that you have a rundown of the build quality of these flash triggers, you probably want to know how to use them. And it's very, very simple. All you have to do is attach your flash onto one end, like, like so, and then lock it down here. And then of course attach this to your light stand however way you want. You can also hang this from somewhere and then attach it through the PC sync cord. But the flash that I'm using right now does not have a PC sync cord. I mean a PC sync port, so that's not the method I use. I just attach it on. And then of course you're going to have to attach it onto your camera, like so. Right now it's already on top of this Canon Rebel T3i. You can just lock it on there. So that part is very, very simple. Now let's move on to how you actually set up the flash and the triggers to be able to use uh, properly. All right, so I've just attached the triggers onto the flash itself. And what you want to do with the triggers is you, you have to change the channel and the group to the proper one that you want. And this is one of the only settings that you'll actually need to change through the triggers themselves because you can actually, once you do this, you can change the settings of the flash within the camera, which is pretty cool. So you can change it from high speed sync to first curtain shutter. You can change the power output. You can move it to ETTL with the camera and you can do all sorts of things. So what you need to do is just set it to the right group and right channel, which you do of course with the triggers here and here. And then you're pretty much good to go with a flash. You can attach this onto your light stand and then you're again, good to go. So now we're here in the menu of the Canon Rebel T3i because this is where all the action happens. So now that we've attached the Young Nuo triggers onto the camera and to the flash, you can go into the first menu of the Canon Rebel T3i and go down to flash control. So we're gonna hit enter. And you have a whole bunch of settings, but what you want to do is go to external flash function settings. And this is where you can change all of the settings that you want. You can change the mode of your flash. So if your flash is on manual, you can change it to ETTL and it's going to change it on the flash itself as well. So you don't need to walk up to your flash to do it. 
You can do ETTL, but I usually just use manual when I'm using these triggers. ETTL does work just fine, but I'd rather have that extra control and more consistency with my flash. So I do manual, ETTL works just fine. You can experiment with that, of course, depending on the flash that you're using. So you can go to shutter sync. Right now it's first curtain shutter, uh, which is the only, you can't do second curtain shutter when you're using these wireless triggers, it doesn't support it. But these triggers are known for the high speed sync setting. So we're going to click that. You can also change the zoom function of your flash right from the camera itself, which is super cool. Wireless function and enable, of course, master flash channel. So you can change the channel here to whatever you want and you can change the group as well. So you can do all groups fire the same. You can do an AB ratio or you can do ABC ratio. So what that means is basically when you do AB ratio, you have A and B and the settings, the power output will be different for each flash. You can also do um, ABC and then that's going to open up the C option so that you can change that. But I usually just do all and they all fire the same power and then I just basically move the flash around. If I can't do that, that's when I use the group settings. So that's basically all you need to know. But I wanna show you one more thing actually. So if you go into ETTL flash, what's going to happen is when you go to firing group, you can do all ABC and AB, but what you're given is flash compensation, just like you would if you were using ETTL on your camera. So this is really nice. You can do uh, exposure compensation for, for one flash, or you can do it for you know different ratios depending on what flashes you're using. So that's really nice. And that's how you control the settings of your flash through the camera itself. So now that you know how to use the flash triggers, you're probably wondering how they perform. You can use these flash triggers for a whole bunch of scenarios, like if you're shooting sports and you need that extra shutter speed to freeze the action. But what I use it for in particular is to be able to use lenses wide open outdoors while still being able to use flash. Because when you shoot wide open outdoor, you're typically shooting at the you know, one two thousandth shutter speed range or higher. And when you're shooting at that range, you can't use your standard flash triggers because those have a limit of one two hundredth of a second, let's say. And so you really can't shoot wide open when you're doing that sort of thing unless you're using ND filters. But I really don't like messing with ND filters when using flash. I like using, being able to control the flash itself to let out the amount of power that I want as well as the camera. So that's what I use this combination for. And as you can see, the results are pretty good. I really like using this combination outdoor when I'm planning to shoot wide open. So that's it guys. That's my review of the Young Newell YN 622 wireless flash triggers. If you guys want to purchase these flash triggers, I do have links down below. I'm also going to leave the sample photos in a blog post which will be linked to down below. So do check that out. And I will also show you guys a video that I did a long time ago where I used these flash triggers uh, outdoors and I did sort of record it really quickly and did a voiceover. So that's also going to be linked in the blog post down below. I hope you guys liked this review. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.